All right. Welcome back to Harmonize Your Life, Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. I am your generous host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado, and we are in this now. This is our second episode for the month of November. Yes, this is our second episode, and I'm excited about our conversation today. One of the reasons I'm excited about today's conversation is because we talk a lot about health and wellness and eating healthy, resting, exercising. And sometimes I have found that um, the women who come to me, some of my clients and others will come to me and uh, like my coaching clients and others will say, I want to do these things, but I don't know how to practically integrate a healthy um, lifestyle or healthy health and wellness practices, self-care practices into my everyday life. And so I want to talk to a woman of God who has, I I mean, I admire her. I kind of want to be like her in some ways. I mean, I'm telling you, she hits, he's hitting it in all the areas, right? She's checking off all the boxes. And I just want to have a conversation about how we can practically incorporate healthy uh, lifestyle practices into our everyday life. Okay. So we'll be right back with my guest right after this. Well, my guest is in the podcast studio with us, Reverend Minister Brenda Troy, who is with us today. She is the wife of Dr. Keith A. Troy, pastor of the New Salem Baptist Church located in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Minister Troy was educated at both Kent State University and um, and the Ohio State University, respectively, where she was a banking and finance major. Minister Troy is a graduate of the American Baptist Church Lay Pastors Training Program, and she holds a Bachelor of Arts in Pastoral Leadership from Newburgh Theological Seminary. Troy, um, uh, Reverend Troy, was licensed in the gospel ministry in 2005 at New Salem Baptist Church. In addition, she is a um, is a versed business owner and has extensive experience in the banking and human resources industries. God has blessed her with many opportunities to deliver training to more than 10,000 people in the areas of spiritual growth, personal and professional development, business administration, and organizational management. She has also established a family-owned foundation, MTASK, to leave a legacy to her children. Minister Troy serves as the director of New Salem's Promised Land uh, Children Ministry, the Hospitality Department, and the Women of Power Ministry, where she has served over 20 years. Through her passion to serve women, she founded the Woman of Power Retreat and Conference in 2012, established uh, the Saint Sankofa House, a safe haven for women coming out of prison, re-entering society, and also established the WOP Clothing Boutique, where they provide free clothing for women, men, and children. In addition, uh, Brenda uh, further helped establish a community collaborative with over 12 agencies to deliver programs to community residents. That the, and this outreach has allowed her to counsel more than 2,500 women. Minister Troy is very active in the community. I call her a spiritual ninja. <laughs> she has. She is very active in the community. She has served in various organizations, including Action for Children, Franklin County Children's Services, Lot Carry Board of Foreign Missions for Women, and the Lot Carry Teenage Sex Trafficking International Committee. She has served diligently with choices, domestic violence, and um, a shelter for abused women. 
Uh, Minister Troy has received numerous awards for her outstanding dedication to serving women, youth, and children with her most recent awards being the President's Lifetime Achievement Award from President Barack Obama for her service in anti-human trafficking. The, uh, corp the uh, corp uh, corporate uh, connections, Don's A. James Award in 2018 and recognized Zeta Phi Beta Sorority uh, Incorporated Gamma Zeta Chapter for human humanitarian work in 2020. Welcome, my friend, Brenda Troy. Hello there. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, too. I'm glad you were able to connect. Oh, yes. I've been everywhere around the church trying to find the spot. <laughs> and uh, So what we learned today, we have some areas that we need to increase the Wi-Fi. OK. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, um, this COVID environment and pushed us all into these these virtual spaces yeah. and it's in, in a lot of ways been very good for us but then it is a lot of work and and tweaking that have to go on to make sure we can stay connected absolutely absolutely so we've learned some things and we're still learning that same here girl same here <laughs> trust me i always say uh this whole uh wi-fi virtual stuff can be and technology can be your friend and your enemy all that exactly. stuff Exactly. Right. So, Brenda, you know, this is a, a long overdue conversation that you and I are having on this podcast because I've been following you and connecting with you for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the pleasure, thanks be to God, to minister in your women's conferences at New Salem Amen. and be a part of you, what the work that you are doing there and uh, empowering women. And I think one of the things that you and I really, that I really connected with you around was this idea of healthy living. Absolutely. And holistic living. And mm -hmm. I mean, in some ways, girl, you, I mean, I look up to you, especially when it comes to that nutrition thing, girl, <laughs> you got that down. <laughs> you got that down. And so I want to talk to us. I want there a lot of times I have several clients um um as a coach i am also a health and wellness coach in addition Absolutely. to being a pastor and um i have several clients who come to me and women in general who come to me and they want to know how to practically incorporate healthy living mm -hmm. uh practical live uh practical steps to holistic living and i just want us to talk about that because both of us you and i both have full plates yes Meaning we do a lot in reading your bio. You can you see all the things that we're doing. We're we're wives, we're mothers. Yes. You're a grandmother. Yes. <laughs> and I'm I'm praying to be one real soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and um and then we're pastors' wives. We yes. minister ourselves. We mm -hmm. minister in our local church and in the community. We have our own ministry the adventures outside of our church. Uh, with our husbands and separately from our husbands. And this is being women. Absolutely. You know? But yet we have to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while we're taking care of everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so I wanted you to talk to us about your, a little bit of your journey, your self-care journey, and what motivates you to empower women to live holistic lifestyles. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, I appreciate it. And you know that we both definitely have full plates, but we both believe in encouraging and increasing the power of women. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my journey with wanting to eat healthy and to be strong in our holistic living and our health and wellness started with my mom. Okay. My, mo my mother passed away from pancreatic cancer. And she was only 49. So at the time, I was trying to figure out how, first of all, how it happened. She was a diabetic, but not diagnosed with diabetes long. She was diagnosed in the month of December, and she passed away May 1st. So not a, not a long window time. And so at the time that she was visiting the Cleveland Clinic, which you very well know, the areas mm -hmm. in Ohio, mm -hmm. I was in the, in the library reading, trying to find out about this disease, diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I learned at the time how strongly it was connected to our diets. 
And so my mother was not a good eater. You know, she's from, you know, the Southern area where they use fat back to cook everything in and you know, the lard and all of those things. So she wasn't a very healthy eater, but I was reading and learning how so many things do negative things to our body. And I believe at that time I made a decision. Oh, there's some things I will not be eating or putting in my body. So I went on a on a on a journey then, uh, not as strong as I am now, but I began to decrease some of the things that we were eating. That, as our culture, we didn't know that there were certain things we should not be putting into our bodies. Right. As as, as our history and our culture, you know, there are some things that our grandparents they had to eat so that they could eat. Right. Right. And so, right. Yes. So we didn't learn a lot of those things were bad to us for us because our people, our families, they had to survive. And so right. some things that they ate, that's all we had. So right. that's what began uh, my journey of seeking to eat uh, better and health and wellness. Well, let me first say, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your mother at such an early age. How long ago was that now? It has been 30 years. Wow. 30 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm very, very sorry to hear that you lost your mom at such an early age. How old were you? Uh, that's a good question, Tony. Let's have us put like this young, not like I'm old now, but young. Okay, yeah, I mean, you're gonna make me figure, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Okay, how old I was. <laughs> no, I mean, because you know, yeah. a lot of times we don't think about, and of course, you know, like you said, our parents did the best they could. You know, yeah. when you know better, you should do better, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. But I think that sometimes we don't even think about as us today, right? Um, how. I always say self-care is not only a gift to me, but it's also a gift to everybody else that I'm, that I care for and that's that true. I love. So that's if true. I'm healthy, that's a blessing, not only to me, but it's a blessing to my family. That means a, that I'll be around a long time, uh, hopefully, except if that's, you know, if the Lord says the same, I'll be around a long, doing my part to stay around. Um, then I'm lessening the amount of time that my family has to spend taking care of me true because I'm taking care of, you know, I'm, I'm healthy and strong or whatever. Um, certainly, you know, it is, it's cheaper to be healthy than to be sick. It is, it is, it you is. Know, some people say, you know, well, I can't afford to eat healthy. It's, you know, but it's either pay me now or pay me later. Yeah. And when people say I can't afford to eat healthy, I usually respond, but you can afford a co-payment to go to the doctor for the doctor to share with you, there's something going on in your body. So it's better for you to go ahead and pay the extra to eat fresh fruit and vegetables than to pay a co-payment at the doctor because you had to go for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I, and I've watched you over the years um, as you, you know, when I came into a relationship, you, you, you were already, very, very health conscious, eating healthy, eating clean, as as we say. Yes. Uh, and uh, but then I've even seen you take it to the next level over these last few years of your life um, and and sharing it now. I imagine at first it was, you know, you doing it for you. But now you're actually empowering other women yes. and other people in your community, not just women, but men, everyone in your in your community um, to be healthy and whole, right? Right. Yep. Correct. We uh, do a program that we call extreme transformation mm -hmm. where we take 15 weeks to encourage women and men to make a lifestyle change, not to go on a diet because, you know, when you're trying to go on a diet, if you don't do it the way that it says to do it on a document, it can upset you. It can take you to a place yeah. you don't need to be. And we've learned that scales are really not your friend. Because you get on a scale, you gain two pounds, you get upset about it. The <laughs> next day, you, you you lose one pound, then you treat yourself, you eat a donut. Then the okay. next day, yeah, the next day you get on, you gain three pounds. So I really encourage people, stay away from her. She is not your friend because okay. it's not encouraging. Okay. And so we take the 15 weeks and we try to encourage them to make a lifestyle change. Like if you eat sour cream, try yogurt you know, to do some alternative, make some changes. Okay. okay. If you drink whole milk, let's try some 2% milk. Okay. So you get to the 1% milk, then maybe you'll try a milk that's almond milk or oat milk, milk or, or rice milk. milk. 
Yeah. Okay. To go slowly to make some changes. Every good change that you make is going to benefit your body. Every so, good yeah. change. Now, this is practical. And that's why I wanted us to talk mm -hmm. practicality, because a lot of times people think they got to go immediately in, throw everything out no. you know, and make this radical change. And then they find that it's not lasting because they didn't take the small practical steps that you are talking about right now. Absolutely. You don't want to take yourself on a drastic change because then you're going to start craving for foods that you, you gave it away. You, you gave everything out of your refrigerator to one of your friends or whatever, but you're going to start craving that slice of cake that was in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. You're going to start craving that sub sandwich with all that processed meat on it. So you got to do it slowly. And so each week, take something that you're going to take away, but replace it with something. And so if you like, um, let's say a lot of people eat a lot of meat. So take a week and try a meatless Monday. Try one day that everything you eat is vegetables. Don't eat anything that had a mother. Okay. Eat just vegetables for that one day. So okay. what I like to call it is in a lot of people um, now are getting on the bandwagon and calling it meatless Mondays. Yeah. So take a Monday, meatless Monday, everything you eat from breakfast to dinner mm -hmm. is a vegetable. It's okay. a vegetable meal. So do that. Try to do that the next Monday, then the following Monday. Go slow. And so the longer you spend time with encouraging yourself about your palate, the more successful you will be. OK, the yeah. longer you say that again, the, the longer, longer you take uh -huh. to increase some things from your palate, mm -hmm. the more successful you will be. The more the longer you take to decrease some things from your palate, yep. the more successful you, you will be. You will yep. be. Okay. Because if you, you eat ice cream and you decide, well, I'm not eating ice cream. I'm not going to go to the Dairy Queen, mm -hmm. but you don't replace it with anything. You're going back to the Dairy Queen because you're going to crave that. Yeah. So since you eat ice cream, instead of eating ice cream, try sherbet. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're still getting the, the craving of the taste of the ice cream and the sugar, but decrease it. You're going to mm -hmm. have sherbet instead. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? Um, what I have found is as I have made these small changes, they are more lasting. Mm -hmm. And I have found that my palate changes. That's true. That's talk, true. Can you talk about that? Yes, your palate will change. You will begin to teach your body what it actually needs, more of what it needs than what it wants. Okay. And a lot of people like desserts. They like sugar. They like desserts. Mm -hmm. Well, fresh fruit is also a dessert. It has right. a lot of fresh fruit has a lot of sugar. Lot of sugar. It does. And a lot of Absolutely. people don't realize that. Absolutely. They're thinking they're just eating you know, healthy or, you know, thinking they're, yeah, thinking they're eating healthy because they're eating fruit, but right. even that you got to monitor how much because it has a lot of sugar, a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. But instead of eating a slice of cake, mm -hmm. eat an apple mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll begin to taste the sugar in the apple. When you start saying to yourself, you know what? I'm not going to eat the cake today. I'm going to eat an apple, eat strawberries, eat blueberries, blackberries, the sugar content, and then if there's a, a, you cannot let the cake go, have a sliver of cake instead of a slice or a hunk of cake, make okay. it a small sliver of cake so okay. that you can get the taste you're looking for, but you're looking forward to decreasing eating those things that do not benefit our body. Wow. Okay. And so that, when you say a slither, that, that, that speaks to me to portion control. Yes. That's what it is. Portion control. control. Till you get um, to the point, the stronger mm -hmm. you become, you're going to say, I don't need the cake. What else is there that I can have? And mm -hmm. especially if you're going to an event or you're going to someone's home for dinner, look at the table and see what else you can have an alternate for the sugar intake. There's going to be something on the table you can have. Right, right, right. That's, that's, that. I mean, all of this is really, really good. And when you, when you, um, we, we talk about changing our eating habits and being very practical about it. Um, I want you, I want to go back to something we talked about a minute ago with portion control. Can you talk a little bit about why that's so important in our American culture? Because we do everything big, right? Right. Well, we do everything big. And remember now, I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings that might be listening out there, but we are a greedy country. 
The U.S. is agreeing. You not heard not feeling. Say it. <laughs> the say U.S. It. is a greedy country, and we're a very wasteful country. We throw a throw away more than we eat. We're very wasteful. Yeah. But yeah. if you take the palm of your hand, just the palm of your hand is the serving size. The palm of your hand. That's the serving size. You know. But us, we got big servings. We gotta have a lot. We want a lot of macaroni and cheese. We want a lot of, yeah. When you only need to eat what nourishes your body, you eat to live and not live to eat. Oh, I love it. You yeah. eat to live, and live not but not live. live to eat. So the portion controls, you only need the center of your hand, the palm of your hand. If you have any more than that, that's too much. That's too much food at one serving. But as a culture, we haven't learned that. And we do every celebration, we have food. Everything we celebrate, we do it with food. And so we haven't learned. You can have a graduation celebration with hors d'oeuvres, a light punch. You don't have to have baked beans, slabs of ribs, macaroni and cheese, sweet potatoes. That's what we've learned to do. You don't have to have it. It's what we've learned to do. You can have a fresh fruit salad, a green salad, a nice pasta salad. You can do those things. But if we don't have all of the other stuff, we don't think we celebrate it. <laughs> and then, you know, and then let's, get, you know, our cousins and we all want to know who made the potato salad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And depending on who made it depends on whether or not you're going to eat any of it. <laughs> Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's 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 so good because a lot of times we do think right. that we have a celebration, we have to have all of this food. But what about mm-hmm. like just lighting our nerves, or right. like you said, it could be just a uh, uh, um, tea and uh, a light dessert. It doesn't have to be all of the baked beans, the ribs, the chicken, the hot dogs, everything at one time. Exactly. We pile all that on one plate. That's right. And, and did you, sometimes go back for more. That's right. It, that's right. And we don't know that mac, mac and, macaroni and cheese is in the meat family. We don't know that. It's in the meat family. So if you have, yeah. it's in the meat family. Yes. If you go to a child care center or um, uh, elementary school, there are some schools when they have lunch, they will have the macaroni and cheese, maybe a slice of bread and a glass of milk at some of the schools because macaroni and cheese is in the meat family. It's in the produce food group. Wow. And so if you're having macaroni and cheese on your plate, chances are you should put the fried chicken back. You should put that rib back. You should put that pork chop back because you already have the protein on your plate. It's the mac and cheese. Wow. Is the, is the protein because of the milk and the eggs? And the cheese. And the cheese. Yep. And the cheese. Wow. And the cheese. Absolutely. At our church, when we used to own a daycare center, we had a child care center. We had it for 18 years. On the food group in the state of Ohio license, macaroni and cheese was a serving. So wow. we would serve it. It is a serving. Wow. But so if you have, so for Thanksgiving, Lord Jesus, I hope we're not, we're not killing somebody's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Well, they can have it, but put that turkey back. <laughs> or the dressing and the gravy, put it back. <laughs> you know, but you know, they're not going to, listen, we got to have it all. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly we right. We got to have it all. So let me ask you this. If someone, like holidays are coming up, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. talking about the way we need to eat. So if someone, say, on Thanksgiving had a plate and they have small serving of macaroni and cheese and a small serving of of turkey or dressing, is there any way to substitute or uh, how can I say, if they eat that on Thanksgiving day, could they, is is there a way to uh, balance that later on in the week by, by how we eat? Well, you have what to make, the, yeah, one of the things we have to make the decision, first of all, am I going to be serious about my lifestyle? Okay. Okay. So if I make the decision to be serious about my lifestyle, I have to make great choices at at the time of the meal. Okay. If not, I'm going to continue to make excuses. I ate this on Wednesday, but on Thursday, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I ate this on Friday, but tomorrow. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have to make the decision. And you know, you need prayer because prayer will give you the strength to succeed at this because it's not easy. No. And so not. you have to make the decision that your lifestyle, you want to change and you want what's best for you. 
And what I I like what you just said, you said we have to make the decision at the time of the meal. Yes. That's that's very powerful. And I don't want you to gloss over that because like you said, we will make excuses or we'll make allowances for overindulgence or whatever. Absolutely. And think and saying, well, you know, later on I'm going to, I'm going to fast or I'm going to clean my system or I'm not going to eat or whatever because I ate. And And what we do is we call it a cheat day. When you get serious about your lifestyle, there are no cheat days. No, people say I cheated yesterday, but I'm going to make it better tomorrow. What if tomorrow never comes? What if tomorrow never comes? So you have to make a serious decision. It's about your lifestyle. Why would you, our, our model when we're teaching health and wellness here, our model is why would you take 15 minutes to destroy a portion of your life? You don't eat longer than 15 minutes. That meal is no longer than 15 minutes. So why would you take 15 minutes to destroy a portion for the rest of your life? Because you don't eat, you don't eat longer than that. Unless you, if you're having a conversation at your meal, you're going to eat, but you're going to talk longer than you digested the food. So for me, 15 minutes is not worth me interrupting a healthy lifestyle. It's not worth it. Wow. Yeah, because then that 15 minutes could turn into 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever, yeah. or medical right. care. Or yeah. then the next day you say, well, I'm going to have a cheat day. Most people do it on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to have a cheat day, but I'm going to get back on my diet to, on Monday, or I'm going to get back on my lifestyle on Monday. Why would you sacrifice that time for health and wellness? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So let me ask you this. Brenda, because I've been around you when you're on the road, um, particularly at conferences, women's conferences, and I see mm-hmm. how serious you are. You bring your stuff with you. Yes. And if you do eat in a restaurant, you're very particular about what you eat. So what tell me how did what are some practical ways if we're traveling? Talk to us about some of the things that you that you do. Okay. Um, and I know you've grown to this, but I want everybody to hear. Mm-hmm. So, because I've watched you and I'm like, now nah, that's some serious, <laughs> that's some serious commitment. Yeah. When you start, when you begin this lifestyle, if you just start small changes and you start feeling how your body is at reacting to the small changes, we have to be careful with our hypertension, our cholesterol and our diabetes. So once you start eating the things that's good for us, you will begin to notice you're starting to feel better. And so in order not to be challenged or tested or enticed to eat something that's not going to be good for you, bring your food with you. Meal prep, bring it with you. If anybody gets offended, let them get offended. But it's all about you. It's self-care. It's all about you. So when I'm traveling, depending on where I'm going, I bring my own salmon. I will freeze it and put it. I carry a um, bag that has the dry ice pack in it. I will bring my salmon. I freeze it because there's only certain salmons that I like. Uh, and that's really the only meat that I eat. And, you know, they're debating if fish is a meat. To right. me, its mother had a heartbeat. That makes it a meat to me. You mm-hmm. know, so I eat this, bring my own salmon. I bring snacks, healthy snacks. I bring things that are going to suffice my hunger. I bring my own protein bars and some of them I make myself. I bring my own water because I only drink certain types of water. I bring it all, all with me. And that's it's it's more important to me than the clothing that you're going to bring for the trip for the conference. I bring my food. And so <laughs> that way you are not uh, encouraged to eat things that's not good for you. So if you're sitting in a meeting and there's nothing, there's candy all around, reach in your bag and bring the snack that's for you. Okay, and, and don't apologize for being committed to your wellness because I don't. And, and Dr. Tony, you've seen me. I don't care. Yeah. I'm to take it right out of my bag. Because <laughs> I it's you. Yeah, it's all about me. And so it's only a few minutes. I'm not going to waste a few minutes of wellness. Not for me. Wow. So, yeah. So a few minutes of wellness. I love yeah. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So bring bring whatever you're eating or learning to eat. That's a lifestyle for you. Bring it with you. That way you're not, you know, and you've learned in some cities you go to, you'll go to a grocery store. Like I only drink 
uh, like almond milk or oat milk or rice milk. Mm-hmm. You'll go to the grocery store and you're looking for rice milk. Well, some stores don't carry rice milk. Well, I bring it because I, I drink it. I, my protein shake, I put it in rice milk or oat milk or almond milk. I okay. bring it with me. They have small, little small travel containers that you mm-hmm. can find at different grocery stores. Wrap them in bubble paper, put them in the bottom of your suitcase. You're good to go. You don't have to search for a grocery store in the city that you're going. You brought it with you. Wow. So now let's talk a little bit. Um, let's shift the conversation a little bit toward exercise because also okay. um, a, um, healthy eating also, I mean, healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. also includes how we move our bodies. Right. So um, what do you do for exercise and, and how do you maintain that? Okay. I am a CrossFit, CrossFit trainer. I like CrossFit. Okay. And CrossFit is very intense, but... It does what you need for your body. Now, everybody's not going to do CrossFit, but it works for me. I got bored going to the gym, going, doing those classes. Now, that's just me. You know, going to the aerobics class, going to the kickboxing class. At some point, you get get bored with that. So I started doing CrossFit. CrossFit Mm -hmm. does the total body. It also gives you the cardio. It also Mm -hmm. gives you the strength training. You need all of it. So the eating and the working out, it goes together. And Dr. Tony, I've seen you work out with your trainer as well. So they go together. So you got, some people say 60, 40 is 60% of the eating, 40% of the working out. Some people say 50, 50. For me, it's 60, 40. 40% 40 of my eating for me and 60% of the workout for me is what I like. And so I do the strength training, you know, lifting weights so that your body can be strong. A lot of women don't like to lift weights because they think they're going to get all bulky and Mm -hmm. look like a man. Mm -hmm. We don't have the testosterone to look like that. So it's okay to lift weights. But some women won't lift. Yeah. You do need the cardio (laughs) and the lifting and the strength training. And that's why I do both. I do do the cardio and I do the, the weights because it does strengthen me. I feel my bones are strengthened, my muscles toned, all of that, um, you feel real solid. I, and the strength and the endurance that I get from it. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's Your back good. is straight, you know, because we don't want to start moving. We don't want to start humping over from osteoporosis. Right. When you're lifting, it helps your back to be straight. You know, mm-hmm. your hips become to get in alignment. One day yeah. I saw you, you was with your trainer and the exercises that you guys did that day, we had done it that morning too. And I said, oh, well, look at Dr. T. We all doing this today. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The exercise. And, and I love it too, because it's different. It's a different yeah. workout every time. So yes. I don't get bored. And same with us. Absolutely. We run, a, um, we ran 400 meters yesterday. There are times we do the 800 meters. There are times okay. we, we flip the tires for our yeah. strength. Yeah. You uh-huh. know, so it's really good. And I want people, especially women to understand, you are not going to bulk up. Unless you take steroids, you yeah, know, right, right. Yeah, that's the and, only. And thing. usually, people that are doing that for those shows and stuff—that's a different kind of thing. That's not absolutely what we're doing every day to be healthy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yeah. But the workout is the workout is amazing. It takes ten years off of your life. Working out, strength, and cardio takes ten years off of your life. So if you're yeah, if you're 51, you're 41, you know, you're yeah. 51, you're yeah. 41, you're 41, yeah. you're 31. So, yeah, that's, that's right. I yeah. had somebody say to me the other day, Oh, you look like a teenager. I said, I'm, I'm not a teenager, but you know what? I feel healthier today. I'll be 60 next year, and I feel healthier at 59 than I did at 29. See, absolutely, you feel because so I wasn't good. serious about. I wasn't serious about my health and wellness back then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so but I feel healthier today. So let's talk a little bit about um, this holistic and healthy lifestyle. It also includes um, our eating. It includes our, our uh, exercise, but it also includes our um, our mental health and mental health emotional. And spiritual. Emotional. And spiritual. So Absolutely. talk a little bit about um, what you share, how you help women in those ways. Okay. So we use a book, it's called the Lord's Table. So we use that book so that we can encourage women to meditate on the spirit, meditate on the word of God, meditate on how good he's been to you. You know, some people say, well, I'm not that spiritual. Learn to connect with the one that created you. 
It doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you have to be this Christian that everything thing you say that comes out of your mouth is all holy mm-hmm. and all of that. And you know, Dr. Tony, we don't do that. We have a good time. We are, everything ain't so holy that everything come out of your mouth is about the Bible. Exactly. So, yeah. So learn that your mental wellness is important. If you have a challenge and you need to go to a counselor, go to your counselor. If yeah. the counselor says you need to have medication, please follow your doctor's instructions. But in order to be strong and well-rounded, you've got to take care of your mental wellness, your spiritual wellness. You need to go to a a physician, get an evaluation, make sure that your mental state is well. You know, some of us have been through a lot of things, you know, like you too, Dr. T, you lost your mother. And I was sorry to hear about your mom. The grieving is a lot for us, a lot. And so with the grieving, sometimes we need help. You know, we need a counselor to help walk us through our mental wellness because grief is something that you can't explain the degree of the pain, but you can learn to manage it. And, you know, with us losing our mothers and you were close to yours, too, it's hard to get through it some days. Some days are better than others. But for your mental wellness, get the help that we need. It's no longer taboo to go to a counselor. It's taboo if you don't go. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, we say you can have Jesus and a therapist. That's exactly right. Exactly. And, right. And, and if you, and you know, you know, for some people that deal with clinical depression and things of that nature, there, I'm sure that there are foods that you can eat. Sometimes people have to get on medication or whatever to help get them back in alignment. But you, yeah, we have to take care of that aspect of our absolutely, life. absolutely a holistic way of living and being our spiritual life, our mental health, our mm-hmm. physical, even our financial life, our relationships, yes. all of that makes up a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. All the components go together. All the pieces of the puzzle puzzles go together. And whatever we stand in need of, we got to reach for it so that we can be well. Now we're, we're a little bit healthier than the generation before us, but let's not be good. Let's be great. Let's be great. And so we need to eat the things that's going to nourish our spiritual, our physical, our mind, our soul. Those foods, there's a lot of foods. Eat the greens, the kale, the collards, the broccoli, the fennel. Eat the greens so that you can be strong. The other thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned is learning how to read the back of food packages. When you're buying processed food, which you really should try to stay away from processed food. But if you do eat them, learn to read the back of the boxes. Look at, make sure you don't buy things that say added sugars. Because there's a lot of foods that we eat that says includes added sugars. You want that added sugar to say zero or one percent. The added sugars gets us in trouble. Like people drink a lot of apple juice. If you ever look on the back of that bottle... It has a lot of sugar. Make your own apple juice from scratch. And there are certain things, snacks that we eat. It says added sugar. Stay away from those foods because those things add sugar to it. It'll say on one line how much sugar, like it'll say six grams of sugar. But underneath that, it's going to say includes added sugars. No, we want to stay away from that. Stay away from that. And so everything that you can eat that's not sealed in a package the healthier you'll be, the healthier wow. you will be. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. How important is support systems, Brenda, to making changes in our lifestyle? It's extremely important. It's extremely important to have someone in have, That's family. why you have your 12-week transformation right. program. Absolutely. That's a support system. Yes, it's a support system. The, the ladies can support and encourage one another. And for 15 weeks, you get to learn each other. Most of the time, they become friends. Support is very encouraging because you don't want to be around people, first of all, that make fun of your lifestyle change. Secondly, Mm -hmm. talk about and speak negatively about what you're eating. Those are not the ones you need. You need someone that's going to be a cheerleader for you and say, you know what? I see what you're eating. Go ahead, girl. That's great. Go ahead and eat. How can I help you? How can I be of service? If you have someone that's going to invite you over for dinner, someone that's supportive is going to ask you, What is it that I can prepare that you would like or that would go on your program? You need someone that can see that you're trying to make a lifestyle change for health and wellness. Anyone that attacks the process, you 
You don't need to be around them. You, you know, wow. you can say, you know what? I love you, but I'm going to love you from afar. I have got to do this for me. And wow. people that love and care about you and want you to be well, they're going to encourage the process. Exactly. So we have a yeah. lot of ladies that their husbands say, well, I'm not going, I'm not doing that. I'm going to always eat this way. Prepare what they would like, but prepare what's best for you. You can encourage them to come along, but you can't force them to. Right. If they you don't want to come along, let them stay where they are, but make sure you prepare for you. Now, I do that. My husband says, as long as he's alive, cows, chickens, and pigs need to worry about him. <laughs> so I prepare what he likes, and I prepare what I like. Okay. And so I, eat, I eat what I'm going to eat. And, and y'all been married a long time. A so it long must be time. 47 years we've been married. So if Keith Joy wants fried chicken, I'm going to fry him that yard bird. He can have it anytime he wants. But I'm not going to eat that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. You have given us so many nuggets. How can, if anyone is listening to our podcast conversation, mm -hmm. if they want to sign up for your 12 week transformation program, if they don't live in Ohio, do you have virtual? We are you? working. It's, it's, it's funny you should say that because we are working on trying to do it virtual right now as we speak how to okay. figure out how to do it virtual so we can offer it not only to the people in Columbus, but other ladies around the country that want to join us. And may I say, it's not an easy program, but it's a doable program. And if you follow the guidelines and the outline, you can be successful in your journey. It's 15 weeks, right? It's 15 weeks, 15 Saturdays. Yes. 15 Saturdays. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. You all hear that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put, put your information on the screen. Okay. Um, um, so that they can uh, find you, Brenda Troy. Oh, yes, I, I need to spell that right. Excuse me. Let me fix that. That's Brenda Troy. And uh, let's see. I want to fix that on our screen. For those that are watching us on YouTube, they can see our banners. For those of those that are listening online, uh, we'll have to, uh, they can listen. But if you're not on our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to go there sign up um and and um and subscribe to our YouTube channel because then our analytics we go up in the analytics and when we go up in the analytics when people are put in keywords like self-care health health mm -hmm. wellness mm -hmm. black women women of color yes. uh mental health all the things that we talk about on this podcast uh fitness fitness motivation all those That's things true. come up and you'll be able to readily find conversations like the one I'm having with my sister and my friend, Brent, Reverend Brenda Troy. Brenda Troy is from the New Salem Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. Her website is NewSalemCares.com, um, NewSalemCares.com. You can also follow Brenda on Facebook at Brenda Troy. Her Facebook page is there and on Instagram at Cookie Troy. I found her on Instagram. Yes. So, um, but connect with Brenda Troy, um, send her a message on Facebook, um, uh, go to her website at the church, call the church and see how you can connect to this 15 week transformational program. I am telling you, I'm telling you, I can vouch for her authenticity, for her, um, for her, her heart to see women well, spirit, soul, and body. I've seen what she does in her own life. She's not just talking the talk. She is walking the walk. And I just love her. I mean, I'm telling you, I love her. She's one of my, uh, she's one of my inspirations for self-care, health and wellness. And so I don't even know if you knew that, but you, are I did not get today. Thank you. I appreciate you. I <laughs> one of my inspirations. And so, um, I'm, you know, we have to develop, you talk about support systems and, and things like that. We need people in our lives that we can look up to, that we can talk, that can talk Absolutely. the language mm -hmm. that can encourage us, Absolutely. um, to, to be better and do better mm -hmm. in this area of our lives. Brenda, thank you. Thank again. you. Is there is a, as we are closing out, I do want people to know they can find this podcast on Anchor, on Apple, on Google and Spotify. You can also go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Tony G Alvarado on YouTube, mm -hmm. Dr. Tony G Alvarado and go there, subscribe and listen to this podcast on a regular basis. You heard us talk about support and I want to encourage the women to join the Harmonize Your Life 
uh, mm-hmm. Women's Self Care Network. We have a network of women that I mm-hmm. lead. Um, and we have women from all over the country that are a part of this network. And I want to encourage you to go there. If you're in need, in need of more support and more encouragement and accountability for self-care, health and wellness. Brenda, as we close out, can you give us one final word of encouragement? Sure. Remember that you are the most important person there is. And you have to say to yourself every day, did you know? that life is not a rehearsal, so live. Wow. Life is not a rehearsal, so So live. live. I love it. Absolutely. And y'all know what I always say, live until you die. That's exactly right. Right. Live, 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 because it's not a rehearsal. That's right. And when it's over. Yeah. A rehearsal means you get to do it again, but you don't. So, no. so live, live and live healthy. Absolutely. Live healthy. Absolutely. All right. Thank you again, Thank Brenda, you. for coming into our podcast studio, helping us with our conversations this month. I appreciate you. I appreciate the example that you are, the work that you are doing. And I look forward to connecting even more with you in the, in the coming year. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, I love you, sis. I love you too. All right. Well, all right, everyone. We'll see you soon next week for another intriguing podcast conversation. Don't miss next week's conversation. We're going to be talking to my chiropractor, Dr. Shauna Wood, uh, uh, Broomfield, Woodruff Broomfield. She just got married and we'll be talking about chiropractic medicine and health and the importance of our spine help. We'll be talking about that on next week in the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. I'll see you soon. Amen. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado, and I want to personally invite you to join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. Join us for fitness motivation, health and wellness information, inspiration, self-care strategies, and ideas for creating harmony in your life. As a certified health and wellness coach, it is one of my greatest honors to support women in their fitness, health, wellness, and self-care goals. Join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network, and we will do you good on your journey.